Bacteria, ideal organisms for investigating the molecules of life. This viscous material is made up of one of life's most famous molecules, DNA, the master molecule that provides the operating instructions for assembling a cell's proteins and other gene products. All life, from bacteria to mammals, develops and operates from a DNA blueprint. Macromolecules can be visualized through the techniques of gel electrophoresis, a process that separates them, revealing their overall structure and size. Colored dyes can be used to illustrate the principles of electrophoresis. These dyes are themselves macromolecules. To visualize just how big these macromolecules are, Consider a molecule of water, an atom of oxygen bonded with two atoms of hydrogen. One hydrogen atom has a mass of one Dalton. The smallest macromolecule that can be imaged by gel electrophoresis has a mass of about a thousand Daltons or one kilodalton. The dye molecules will separate just like DNA and protein fragments. Each molecule has a mass of thousands of kilodaltons. The molecules carry surface charges, some positive, others negative. How these molecules separate on a gel depends on both properties, mass and charge. Positively charged macromolecules will be electrically driven towards the negative side, negative ones towards the positive side. The gel itself exerts a frictional resistance acting as a molecular sieve to separate the moving macromolecules. Various dyes and a dye mixture show how this works. Energize and the molecular race begins. The smaller molecules will migrate faster and so travel farther. Turning off the power will stop the molecular migration. The dyes have separated as predicted with the smallest macromolecules racing ahead and the largest barely making it off the starting line. The same procedure can be used to analyze biological molecules such as DNA. These experiments begin by running fragments of DNA precisely cut by restriction enzymes. These fragments are of known length and are called marker DNA. A marker DNA allows you to plot a reference curve based on the known lengths of the marker fragments and their distances of migration during the run. Points for the curve are determined by the known base pair lengths of the marker fragments plotted against the distance run in millimeters. To find the length of an unknown DNA fragment, measure the distance run and read its length in base pairs off the reference curve. The type of macromolecule you wish to separate will determine which gel substrate to use for electrophoresis. The material used to separate macromolecules having a mass greater than 10 kilodaltons is agarose, made from seaweed. Agarose gel has a relatively homogeneous pore size, which makes it particularly useful for separating elongated macromolecules, such as nucleic acids. The appropriate gel to use for separating protein molecules is polyacrylamide, which is similar to the material used in soft contact lenses. Polyacrylamide gels are produced in precast cassettes. This precast gel is actually a gradient of macromolecular sieves that separate molecules in the 5 to 200 kilodalton range. Polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis 
page is the separation method used for polypeptides and proteins, including enzymes. This module shows how to separate macromolecules, such as dyes or DNA, using agarose electrophoresis. Because DNA is very expensive, it's best to practice using dyes first. The casting apparatus consists of a comb for forming 8 or 16 wells in the gel, a gel casting tray, and end dams. Snap the end dams onto each end of the gel casting tray. Position the gel comb in the center of the gel casting tray, approximately one millimeter above its surface. Melt the prepared agarose in either a hot water bath or microwave. If you use a hot water bath, loosen the cap on the agarose bottle and place it in a 100 degree centigrade water bath until the agarose is completely melted. If you use a microwave, Loosen the cap on the agarose bottle and heat in one minute intervals on low power until the agarose is completely melted. Pour enough melted agarose into the tray to cover the bottom to a depth of three to four millimeters. This will require approximately 25 milliliters of melted agarose gel. Allow the agarose to solidify for approximately 20 to 30 minutes. The agarose gel will turn from clear to opaque when it has solidified. Gently remove the comb from the gel. Remove the end dams from the gel casting tray. The gel is now ready for use. The running buffer is an electrolytic solution which will provide conductance throughout the gel. The running buffer ward supplies is a 10x concentrate which must be diluted before use. Add 35 milliliters of the concentrate to 315 milliliters of distilled water to make a 1x working solution. Place the gel in the chamber. Fill the entire chamber with buffer, covering the gel by approximately 2 milliliters of solution. This will provide an electrical bridge between the anode and the cathode. The samples used in electrophoresis should be measured carefully. Use a micropipette to draw a measured amount. Draw 10 microliters of sample into the micropipette tip. When loading, be careful not to pierce the bottom of the well. Sucrose in the samples will help the sample sink to the bottom of the well. Before activating the power supply, be sure to read the safety procedures outlined in the operations manual. When the power is turned on, gas bubbles form along the platinum electrodes at each end of the chamber as a result of electrolytic decomposition of water. After a few minutes, the dyes begin to separate. Note that the dyes are separating according to their charge and size. The negatively charged particles travel toward the positive electrode or anode and the positively charged particles toward the negative electrode or cathode. They also separate according to their size, with the smaller dyes traveling much faster than the larger dyes. After gaining experience with the system, it is time to run the real thing, DNA. DNA's phosphate backbone gives it an overwhelmingly negative charge. Therefore, the wells must be located at the negative electrode. Cast another gel with the wells located near one end of the gel. Place the gel in the chamber. Fill the chamber with 1x running buffer solution.
with a micropipette, dispense 10 microliters of the DNA sample into each well of the gel. The dark blue tracking dye mixed in with your DNA sample allows visual tracking of the DNA. If a second gel is to be run, stack it on top of the first gel. Add buffer to cover the gel. Load your DNA samples as before. Place the top on your chamber. Connect the leads to your power supply and turn it on. The tracking die begins to migrate towards the anode. When the tracking die nears the end of the gel, the gel run end point, turn off the power supply and unplug it. Remove the gel and casting tray. Carefully place the gel in a staining tray. Pour approximately 100 milliliters of stain into the staining tray so that the stain covers the gel. Allow the gel to stain for 20 to 30 minutes. Carefully decant the used stain. Make sure the gel remains flat and does not move up against the sides of the staining tray. Add distilled water to destain the gel. Gently rock the tray and change the water several times to remove the background color from the gel, leaving dark blue DNA bands. View the gel against a light background, such as white paper or on a light table. Gels may be stored in a sealed plastic bag.